Let's trigger the doors and see where it ends up. First attempt. Here we go. Doors open. The bear is down. Plinko is going. He is plinking. He is plonking. He is coming all the way down. G'day, guys. My name's Josh. You can call me Ja Woodle, and welcome back to Seven Days to Die in the brand new Alpha 18 update. Although I suppose it's not really the brand new Alpha 18 update anymore. It's been out for a while. The stable build is now available, but I don't know. It just rolls off the tongue kind of nicely. Welcome back to Alpha 18, and welcome back to Ja Woodle Park 2 once again, where we're here to do some more testing and building and fun things. Although today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm not actually going to be building a horde base like I normally do. I've got something else planned. But I'll get to that in a second because just like always when we come to this of part 2 We have to pay a quick little visit to the Hall of Legends Take 30 seconds out of our lives to thank the people who make all of this possible and today we are thanking Nico or Nico and Kef and oh, damn it I, I even practiced this before I started recording to make sure I got it right on the first attempt and I still stuffed it up But in fairness look how many letters that is care for Dunday care for Dunday I'm not sure. Whatever. However you pronounce that, I'm sorry for tripping over my own tongue so badly and completely cooking that. But thank you both of you for being awesome legends. But there's only two names there because we have to pay a visit to the MVP tower once again to thank another MVP for going up on the board of honors up on the top. The, uh, the response to the Hall of Legends has actually been really good. I was uh, a little bit nervous that people would get annoyed about, you know, cutting into their content by saying thank you to the people who me uh, make it possible for that to actually be content. But uh, for the most part, people seem to be pretty appreciative of the people who are making this all possible. So the last MVP to go on the board, well, the last MVP, the next MVP on the board is Nimbus. So there you go. There is your place on the board looking over the world. But with those guys thanked and that all done, we need to go find a place to build somewhere maybe out of the normal like Jabuta Park 2 proper somewhere over maybe near uh, Zombie Ski Ball which is a whole lot of fun I'm not going to fire it off today, I've got lots to do no time for playing games, we have to build ourselves a new game I'm going to build this thing just next to the cliff here. I've uh, leveled out some of the terrain nice and quick. we a nice little flat kind of building area. But I need, before I do anything, I need to do a quick little bit of math in my head to make sure that I build this the correct size. Because if I start building like the foundations the wrong size, it's going to throw this whole thing off. And I do not want that. So I'm going to have to kind of figure out how wide this needs to be. It's probably going to be wider than this, but we'll kind of figure that out as we go. Just have to start placing blocks and try to keep counting my head. Although it starts at 500, so I'll probably keep track of it from there to try and figure out how wide this needs to be. That should be big enough. I've got five little uh, goals down the bottom here. So it's probably pretty obvious what I'm making now, if not because it's in the title and the thumbnail, but also because now that the framework's taking place, it's pretty obvious. This is going to be Zombie Plinko. Now this came about because when I was building Zombie Ski Ball over here, I was accidentally calling it Zombie Plinko because I got the names crossed up in my head and forgot which game was which. But then I was like, you know what? We could probably actually make a Zombie Plinko. Why not? It's all the same. You know, we're just ragdolling zombies and giving it a target to fall into. So why can't we make zombie Plinko? So that is what I'm going to be making today. And Plinko has a bunch of buckets at the bottom. They're all going to be different size. So like there's going to be, oh, I'm going to put that across there so we can kind of see a little bit better. That was the wrong spot for that one. Damn it, Josh, come on, pay attention. It would be lovely. Get rid of those. So we're going to have like a four block uh, bucket over here, then three, then the middle, the best, is going to be two, then three, then four again. So it's all nice and symmetrical, all nice and even. Don't know how high I'm going to build it, probably about as high as I built Ski Ball over there. Enough height that whatever you do, when you drop a zombie in, it's going to bounce around and do all sorts of crazy things and end up in the gold down the bottom. And you will have no control about where it actually ends up. But how that mechanism is actually going to work is a surprise. And you'll have to wait to see until a little bit later on. I'm just going to finish off building all of this, making sure this is all nice and stable. Then we can start building up. I'm only going to build the buckets one, two, three high. Just because like from a distance, that looks about right, I think. I mean, I don't want to make it the buckets too deep, even though there's going to be lots of zombies always coming down. I mean, you don't want the ball bouncing out of the bucket, after all. So, deep enough to keep everything in, but not so deep that it's going to take out more board than it needs to. Just around like that. So it should be pretty good. Leaving the inside of these walls hollow, because I have so, so many blocks to place for this. I'm going to be building for so freaking long, just placing blocks down. And if I can skip any sort of sections, it's going to make my life just a little bit better, a little bit more bearable. So, there we go. We've got one, bo uh, one pocket, like the biggest ones on the side, then the middle ones, which are worth more, and then the middle one, which is worth the most, but it's the hardest to hit, and it's also the smallest. And also, on top of that, uh, what I might do... Oh, actually... Hmm... Oh, how am I going to do this? I've made it too wide, so like my first instinct is to go something like this. 
Uh, or maybe, oh, maybe I should make it steeper. I could probably make that steeper, make it a little bit more challenging. There we go, look at that. A nice sharp point on the top, so you've really got to get lucky. You've really got to get it right on the nipples to get the maximum score. If you miss it by just a little bit, I've got my new favorite block in the world, my gables up on the top. It will like, catch your ball and throw it into the next pit. So you've really got to hit it right on the tits if you want to get the best scores there. Let's, uh, let's even it up on both sides, go like this. That's the wrong side on the face, please. There we go. And then all the way along. That will be fine. I actually kind of really, I really like the gables. I've never really used it in any other version or any other base or anything like that. It's a hard kind of block to get a hold of and I don't think you can make it uh, in normal, can you? I don't think you can. Or is it part of... I think I tested this last time, but now I've already forgotten. Um, where's the where's the normal... Like, oh, for goodness sake. There's so much wood stuff. You can't find what you need in there. Concrete. There we go. One of those. Is it in here somewhere? I think it might be. Uh, there. And then gable. Yeah, look. So you got the inverted gables and a little short one. The corrugated iron ones are the big steep ones I'm using here. So you can get gables in the, the normal game. And uh, I feel like they're a bit underrated, you know? Especially for aesthetics-wise. Definitely a good thing to have in your back pocket. Look at that. Just like that. It's all coming together pretty well. I've fallen in love with the gables and used them some more across the board. Some nice slopes. All nice and steep slopes as well. So if you're going to go into the bucket, it's going to pull you in rather than maybe potentially getting stuck right on the tippy top up here. You don't want your zombie getting bent over the ramp and then not falling into the bucket. Then it's no score and then nobody's happy. Not even the zombie who's getting bent over. I uh, need to put some glass all along the front and finish up the wall at the back. Oh, yeah. So people, I, I mean, I complain a lot about not having a field tool. Like, you should be able to just go, like, from here all the way to here and then just be able to, like, you know, fill that with a block I'm holding, which you can do in the POI edit. You cannot do it in a normal world, which is what this is. Because, I mean, I've built this stuff in POI edit. This. I built it in an actual world, which is how Jabudal Park grows. So normally, you would press, like, J or L or whichever one of these. But uh, neither of those work. You cannot fill in a normal survival world. If I had the same tools as the POI editor that I could like put into the um, uh, survival world. That would be the best thing in the world. But unfortunately, there is no mod for that. At least not that I found. Anyway, which is all very sad. So now I'm stuck doing this the hard way and spending all my time placing just a million blocks one after the other. Ah, uh, see, I was thinking that would probably be tall enough, but now that I'm looking at it from setting back a little bit, I don't think it's going to be. I think it needs to be just like four or five blocks taller, I think, which would normally be no big deal, but four or five extra rows taller is <laughs> quite a lot of blocks. I need to I need to cool my jets a little bit, I think. I need to stop building things that are so bloody big until I figure out how to get that field tool sorted, because this is just, I mean, <laughs> come on, Josh, think on a smaller scale. Go back to like your Imperion days where you're Built everything too small for what the game allowed because you just weren't thinking big enough. If only was a, I we could think that way for seven days, it just could build myself like a one by one hut somewhere and never leave again. Yeah, that looks about right, I think. In fact, maybe it's even like maybe one or two blocks too tall. Let's get rid of those and across there like that. I think that should hopefully be a little bit better. Yeah, now that looks about right because that's where I want to drop it from. Ah. Get a zombie. Oh, I totally forgot there were zombies in this game for a second. I was too busy building shit, and I forgot there's actually just like roaming zombies cruising the world. So I've got something for you. Grab the gun and just go boop. Oh, missed it. There we go. All right, right. Now the zombies are dead around me. I have to build that all the way across and all the way down and make that into like a cabinet. And then we can start figuring out how the game's going to work inside that cabinet first, then the game. And it's back to doing this again. Ah, oh, for God's sake. That was like... 200 blocks tall. God, it looks like the thing out of, uh, was it 2001 A Space Odyssey with all the chimps and the big black ob uh, obelisk? Whatever it was. I don't know. It kind of looks like that. Looks impressive. Oh, it's going to take so long to build it that tall. Surely I've got to be near the end now. I'm getting very high up into the atmosphere. I'm running low on oxygen. How, how are we looking? Oh, that's... <gasps> that might be right on the nipples, actually. That might be right, right where I need it to be. Let's see. So I'm looking at the one below the top block all the way back. And we are... Oh, one more. Okay, so that's the thing. You gotta, gotta make sure you're measuring shit up right. That looks good. Okay, there we go. The small, the both of the small sides are done. I've still got the whole back wall to go. This is why when I was doing the um this uh, ski ball ramp and I was like filling in all the blocks at the back here. That's why I did that off camera because that took me a whole lot of time. But I can't really skip that for this one, can I? Because if I skip that, then the game doesn't work anyway. So I got to build all this to go. I'll leave the glass until last. I'll uh, put all like the the plinks. I guess they're called plinks. The things inside the plinko board. Uh, I'll put all them in first and then I'll cover it up with glass on the front and then we can start playing the game. 
Oh, yeah. I, I mean, there are some times where I read the comments and people talk about how uh, I, I shouldn't skip all the bits in between. But, like, I, I can't imagine ever leaving stuff like this in. This isn't something that I would watch. And I always try to make content that I would watch myself. And if I just had, like, even if this was sped up to, like, 500 times, that would be, like, five minutes of just super fast motion block placing. And that sounds hideously boring to me. I'd rather just skip it all. And you could put two and two together. I'd go from this shot here, where the wall isn't built, probably to a shot where it's like significantly more built or even completely built and I'm sure you're smart enough to figure out that I just built the bloody thing. Oh, I'm right at the top. Oh, thank God. I've been losing my mind. The rhythm of placing all these blocks has been driving me freaking insane to the point where I've actually come up with like a rhythm. Like I've picked the, like the three different sounds that play when you place blocks. Because like, da, 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 all the way along. Oh, but I finally got it. We're finally there. Look at that. A giant wall of stainless steel blocks ready to be used for whatever I deem necessary. Oh, that's so many blocks as well. That was like two and a half thousand blocks of stainless steel. Oh my god. That's, uh, I mean, that, that would have just been a build by itself. That was a, that's a whole thing. All right, but now, now we have the backdrop to our Plinko board. Now it is time for me to figure out how the game itself is going to work. And that means I'm going to have to use some Pillar 50s, I suppose. Yeah, Pillar 50s is going to be the best way to do it, I think. Let's get the gables out of the way. And then right on top of there, we're going to go like this, go on face. Ah, so that's what I was worried about. I can't put one right in the center of the board because it's an even number across. Interesting. Now, I could either uh, convert this and make so the center, uh, the center goal is either one block wide or three blocks wide. But I think I like how this is set up at the moment. So maybe I'll just go like right above it. Go like one there and one there. Build that out a little bit. But how far is that? That's two across. If I go to there, one, two, there, one, two, there, one, two, and... Right on the wall, I suppose. I mean, I'm hesitant to leave that one there, though, because that means that a zombie might get stuck there, and I don't want them to get stuck on the board, because that would be a bad, bad time. So maybe I have to, like... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to make this even now. So uh, I've, I've built myself a pickle. I think that will work. They're just kind of going diagonally up. So they go one left and two up. So all the gaps here are two blocks wide, which should mean that the zombies fall through without getting stuck anywhere relatively easily. However, I wasn't thinking I've got a lot of plinks to put into the plinko board. So I should probably figure out what I'm going to paint them now so I don't have to go and paint each individual one down the track. Uh, let's go... Let's go metal red, I think, and we'll paint all sides of you. Because if I paint these all nice and red, then I paint the backdrop behind it something like uh, black granite, I suppose. And that should look reasonably decent, I hope. They're like having having the contrast of the bright red against the dark black, if I don't actually accidentally paint my Plinkos again, uh, usually looks pretty good. I am, I mean, normally I would go purple, but I mean, I've got, I've got purple reserved for some other things. So if all the Plinks are red and the backdrop is black, I can put some purple accents somewhere else. That should look pretty good, I think. Let's get this shit out of the way. Let's copy those from there and fill the stack like that. And then, so now, whenever I place a, a, a plink down, it'll already be red and I'll save myself so much trouble down the track. But right now, I need to finish painting all the rest of these stupid things. That should just about do it. Is that the same length as everyone else? Yes, it is. Look at that. Look at that. That's that's a that's a whole lot of pillar fifties right there. But they all look nice and symmetrical. They're all two blocks apart, both vertically and horizontally. And it's made a nice little pattern. That's worked out really well, I think. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of thinking here, though, is I should probably get rid of this last layer of plinks all the way down here because uh, what I'm thinking is that this is like, it's got to be like a goal uh, to get it into the middle here. So it's got to like, if anything falls into this bit here, that will like, it increases that cone size down into the main, uh, like the, the, the best scoring goal down there. So we go from here all the way across to there, get rid of all of those. I know I just put all of them in, but whatever. And then got a couple more all the way across like that. So much easier to clear stuff out than it is to put them down. And that should be about right. Then it got a little bit of space down the bottom to free fall. I kind of wanted to call this uh, zombie peggle, but peggle would be like, you, you could do it, but if whatever, uh, you have to keep track of whatever pegs the zombies hit and then go in and delete it afterwards. Because peggle is just a glorified version of Plinko, really, with moving stuff and, you know, fun music and like flashy lights and all the things that make a game just a little bit more fun. 
So that, that should work pretty well, I think. This might be a good opportunity to give it a bit of a test run. But to give it a test run, actually, I need to I need to put in a launch mechanism. I need to put it away so you can pick your spot and then send the zombie down to as eventual demise. But you need to pick your spot before you throw the ball down. So you know, put something up the top to give it a kind of launch, uh, something to launch the zombie. Which means, I mean, I'm not going to go grenades this time, but uh, I've got something in mind, which is uh, going to be pretty fun, I think. I'm going to use my newfound love of the powered garage doors, which I think is one of the funnest blocks you get in this game now. Super versatile and super good. So I'm going to use that as a way to drop the zombies. So you can kill it however you want up the top, place it where you want it, and then use that to drop it consistently and without it being influenced by whatever method you use to kill it, because you have to kill it to get it to ragdoll in the first place. So you put it up there, You first of all, you close the garage doors, and they go like, that look at that nice and easy and you go hmm i want to put a zombie right about there so you get a chelsea you put her right there and then we're going to go in fact i need to i need to kill her and uh no, I, without actually taking off her head or anything so i just go like this and just can you just die die please don't fall off the garage doors there you go okay she's dead no she's not she's she can freaking die please there we go okay she's dead right in the middle right where i wanted her so that is the point of my choosing and i go over here and i go boop, and i open the garage doors and she will now fall through the plinko board down the bottom to see where she ends <laughs> Watching her bounce off the poles is freaking fantastic. That was good. Okay, so she ended up in, uh, what, the, the second best slot, not the best. So you can still, I mean, look, I couldn't get it quite perfect. There's, like, little slots all the way around that there's always going to be, I suppose. Slots where they can kind of fall down if they get the right kind of angle. I can't really avoid that, not with a board in this kind of design. But that worked pretty well. She bounced down. She, like, smeared her brain blood all over the walls, all over the plinks. That's why they're red, so you can't see the blood smears. That worked pretty, pretty well. So, yeah, power garage doors as always versatile and great there we go the whole mechanism is now hidden behind some sheets so you can't even see when it's all like hidden away so when you flick that switch you can't see the doors at all anymore it's all nice and secret i love that i love it when it's like all nice and smooth there's no like rough edge or anything you can't see any working or all the working guts of it it's just like the pops out of nowhere and works as it should but with that like that you need to go and pop it back out again like that and put in some more walls along here uh just because like this is going to be a whole cavern up the top here so you go in and you place it somewhere you want but this will be all hidden because it'll be a nice big panel on the front saying zombie plinko or whatever it's going to be actually be called in the end that might be a little bit uh, a little bit of a hint to a secret it's going to happen a little later on but building all the way across here in fact not out of these blocks because these are regular stainless steel and i will not make the journey with regular stainless steel i need the bridge blocks all the way across there because they have ridiculously good horizontal support characteristics so all the way across there so we get to about halfway then we build from the other side and made it in the middle just like when you're building the city harbor bridge yeah yeah nah yeah nah this is uh this is almost done it's a i mean a bit of a shorter build like an easier build compared to some of the other ones less moving parts which makes it easier but oh shit but still a pretty big effort now we build from the other side there we go just like that easy as you like just put the battery bank in here because why not fill it back up with level six batteries and connect you to you and you to the first door back here boom like that and then turn you on this should all close up yes easy as you like and there you go i mean it's not a very spacious area up here but it's enough just to put your zombie down so you can figure out how it's going to go down the bottom there i'm just going to put up some uh some extra blocks across the front here to put like a big sign on the front so we'll just use those same bridge blocks all the way across it's uh it's all come together pretty nicely though i i think it's i mean i need some, a bit of a paint job it looks a bit ugly up the top here right now but for the most part this is all looking pretty lovely so we'll finish off this top part and then we'll give it a proper test run uh well not just one chelsea going down we'll send through uh some other stuff because i'm not going to use chelsea for this i feel like chelsea's not enough of a ball for plinko you know like, a, like normally plinko you have a ball that goes down bounces around and there's all sorts of things and there's one thing i know that looks a lot like a ball and that is a zombie bear i mean sure it's got a bit of a nubbin on the front of it but that's okay in fact do i have what's my um what's my is it this one i think it is is that this one that like lets you uh, behead stuff uh dismember with fists yeah that's the one i need all right i need a bunch of points basically i'm going to take the head off a bear turn it into a berry ball and send it down plinko alley
All right, here we go. I've leveled up all of my Brawler and all of my Fortitude, so my dismemberment chance should be ridiculously high using fists. Come on, come on. No, he's going to take his head off. Keep punching. There we go. All right, head is gone. He is now a bouncy baller bear, ready to go down. Let's jump back over here. Let's turn off the doors, and down he goes. Where are you going to go, Bear? He's, he's a pretty big bastard. He's flopping around. He went straight out of the plinks. Damn it, I didn't put my bloody my glass shield on the front of it yet. Oh, that's annoying. All right, well, we'll just quickly um get rid of you. <clears throat> Nothing happened. No one saw anything. All right, that's um, 372 glass blocks. It's not going to be enough to fill up this whole thing. That's uh, that's annoying. The bouncy ball bear, or bouncy ba uh, ball of bear, rather, or the bouncy bear ball, bounces more than I thought it really ever would. That's all right. At least now we know. I'm going to build up the rest of this, put an ice pick front on the front of it, and then we should be pretty A-OK -okay to go. Oh, I'm only like halfway done. <laughs> it just takes so long. Oh, I've been sitting here for like an hour doing nothing but placing glass blocks down. And before that, it was by placing all the steel blocks down. Man, not the uh, not the most in uh, building a giant box is not the most interesting build I've ever done in my life, that's for sure. But at least we're getting the job done slowly, but surely. The worst part about the glass as well is you can barely see where you've been before. Thankfully, I'm doing this in uh, bulletproof glass, so you've got like that uh, that like hex work, hex work, that hex pattern or that patchwork pattern, the little squares over it so you can see where it actually is. If this is regular glass, I'd have no hope of seeing it. I'd just kind of be going out of touch, and my touch ain't that good. Finally on to the top road, putting the last couple of glass blocks in. I still need to do all of the paint job up up the top here before I do another test run. Because like I'm close enough now, look, I know it works. The bears will go down, the zombies will go down, everyone will go down. Zombie bear plinko will work. I just need to make it look like a plinko board before I get too carried away and distracted by sending zombies to their eventual fate in a bucket at the bottom of the board. Uh, oh, there's only a couple more left. All right, I don't know what kind of uh, what kind of texture I'm going to paint the um, the board up the top here. I feel like there's a, a severe lack of wood going on. A weird, weird, like, oh, is that a, did I miss a whole layer? What is that? That's really, what? Why well, I'm so confused. Why is there a weird, what the hell is that nonsense? It's all glass. Why are you showing me like a random little line? Why are you ruining my aesthetics by having some bullshit glitch in there? No, game, you can't do that to me. I mean, I'll, I'll sort that in a second. I assume if I just get rid of that whole line and replace it, hopefully it will fix it. I don't know, let's give it a crack. Which line? I think it's this one is the one that's giving me trouble. Let's just get rid of them both like that. Is that going to make it look a bit better? That's bloody switches, not glass. Get rid of you. Go in here. Please fix that stupid glitch. Please. Pretty please. No, I just moved it down one. Why? What is this nonsense? Nah, there's nothing I can do. This game's just glitching out. There's like a line through my glass there, but whatever. It's there now. Can't do much more about it. I replaced all those glass blocks. It's not even like in a straight line anymore. It's all over the gaff. It's having a heart attack, but I can't fix it. So let's just focus on something I can fix, which is the ugly nature of this gigantic box I've got here, which means I want to go and get the old uh, wood oak, which was a good one from last time. It's what I painted the ski ball board with and just paint all no that's the wrong one paint all of this there we go nice and big nice big all in wood make it all nice and pretty just like that sunk into the mountains a little bit which is fine don't look at the front because then you'll paint that too all the way across just like that good 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 okay it's all coming together We're not too far away from having this done now just for an added nice little touch up the top here i need a k zombie pling co there we go get rid of the two a's in the middle because that was just my center line all right, that'll look pretty good, I think. I need to paint those things so you can actually see them. Uh, let's, let's just go red. Why not? Let's, let's paint it all red. That will look fine against the wooden backdrop. Although, uh, what, what, are they, what are they painted over here? Oh, it was all... Oh, actually, that's probably a good call. Maybe I should paint it white behind it. I don't like how the eye is... A I mean, I, I get why it is, because it all takes up one block each, but like the eye looks a little bit silly when you put it against all the rest of the letters, because it just doesn't take up nearly as much room as the other ones. But there's not really much you can do about that. There we go. Zombie... Plinko. <laughs> that, that side doesn't stand out at all. I need to fix that. There we go. It is all done and dusted. Let's go close up the drawers up the top just so we can get a proper look at it. How we going? Yep, that looks fine. Right, now we just need to assign some scores to our different boxes. And I've only got two slots in the middle. So let's go... Let's go 50 in the middle there. Where's my zero? There it is. 50 for that one. Let's go uh, 20, actually. Oh, I was going to put the zeros down before I changed off it. Let's go 20 for those ones. Uh, and then on the end of it, we'll go... 
10, I suppose. Although, there's, uh, is this, is this got a center? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's the middle there. Right there. Okay, that's one too many down. There, we'll go here. And you can be 10. So, 10, uh, 10, 20, and 50. So, you can't, if you get two of those, it's worth one of these. Two of these does not equal one of those. That is the gold mine. That is the one that you really want if you can, uh, well, make it happen for yourself. Let's put the signs on the rest of these edges here, like that. And 20, like that. Although, I just realized that the 20 boxes are three blocks across, so I can't center that sign, which is really bloody annoying. Alrighty then, so with that, I think we're just about done and ready to actually have a crack at it. That was hey, a pretty big build. It took me two hours to build this thing. I was expecting it to take far less time before I accidentally made it far bigger than I was really expecting to have to do it. Right, where are we going to put the bear? Where are we going to start our little furry friend from falling? We're starting him over this side, I think. We'll start you right there. Let's quickly kill you. And Oh, can you go in the middle, please? All right, you can just like nudge him around. All right, take off his head. Did you just kill him in one go? Oh, no, he was just knocked out. I thought for a second he died, but that's all right. Ragdoll is ragdoll. Die, you stupid furry bastard. Come on, hurry up. There we go. There goes his head, which means he is now dead. Let's trigger the doors and see where he ends up. First attempt. Here we go. Doors open. The bear is down. Plinko is going. He is plinking. He is plonking. He is coming all the way down. Come on, buddy, please. Go. He's going a bit to the right. Ah, damn it. All right, we start off with a 20. Unfortunate, but not the worst start in the world either. So we still went a little bit right on that one. So let's try that again, but let's start even further over to the left. I need you to die, please. No, he's not dead. I just, as soon as his head pops, I know we're ready to go. We need to turn him into as much of a ball as we possibly can. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right. Doors open, and he's going to start falling. He's all the way on the left. He started all on the left wall. Yep, go on. Yeah, go through. See, that's the thing. You couldn't put those plinks any closer. Oh, he still got stuck. No. Can I, can I just go, eh, eh. Just, just move, you fat furry fuck. Get out of there. Come on, fall down a little bit further. You're not you're halfway down the board. You can't get stuck there. You don't have a head. What's caught on that thing? You've got your freaking like spinal column and a couple of veins sticking out. That's apparently caught your entire body weight. There we go. New bear is ready. Let's open the doors and send him down. Hopefully, he doesn't get stuck like his compatriot did just a second ago. There we go. Getting some speed, which is good. All the way down. He's gone all the way to the right again. Back into the 20 box. So, so far, I've had three attempts. I've got a 20, a 0, and a 20. So, I'm on 40 out of 3. This isn't going well at all. I need one of those 50s. I, I don't know how much further I can start it. Oh, I saw that. I saw that little bit of red. Let's get you and let's go like this. Make sure I'm on the right one. Boop, just like that. Okay, there we go. Let's get a new bear in. Pop his head off again. Hopefully, this guy will make it all, down to the, all the way down to the bottom and go in the box that I'm hoping for. Just come on. Hurry up and die. This is the worst part about it. Just mercilessly slaughtering a bear just so you can have some fun with his corpse. Come on, easy. There we go. All right, here we go. Next turn. Boom. Doors are open. Where are you going to go this time? But he's staying to the left like last time. Last time we started over there, he got stuck. Going down, going down. Yep, keep on going, keep on going. <gasps> there it is! We got a 50! <laughs> All right, so four attempts 20, 0, 20, 50. That gives us 90 with one more attempt. We're going to break 100. Oh, I mean, I hope we never get stuck on the board again. We won't. Let's see if we can break 100 and feel good about myself for a change. Normally, I fail miserably at these kind of things, but this time I feel good about it. Oh, yes. One hit and his head is gone. His stump of a neck is spattering blood all over my brand new game, but that's okay. All right, the fifth and final attempt. I need 10 points to break 100, but anything we'll do is starting all the way on the left again. So hopefully we get that 50 goodness. Open the doors and down he goes. Starting left again, picking up some pace, which is good. Starting to come to the right. There we go. Oh, he's wrapped around a couple of plinks. Keep on going. There you go. Keep on rolling. This is why we use the bear. Oh, he's into the 20. That's okay. That's 110 points. That's a pretty good that's why we use the bear, because he rolls around rather than a zombie, which is kind of like long and elastic and you can get wrapped around a pole instead of just bouncing around. So I reckon, I reckon that's a pretty good game. That could definitely be fun. You get some friends if you have any. I don't, so I have to play these games by myself. But you can get some friends and have some plinker competition. When you get bored of that, we can go play some zombie ski ball. Lots of things you can do inside Seven Days to Die that isn't just going and raiding and blowing up zombies and doing all sorts of fun things. That actually turned out pretty well. I'm glad that I started saying uh, zombie plinko by accident before 
before so I could come and build this thing. That worked out really well. But there you go, guys. That is the end of Zombie Plinko. I really enjoy just going into the world and building something that isn't actually part of the game. You know, like creating a game within the game, like a mini game kind of thing. I find that really fun. Seeing how we could use the game's engine to create a game for ourselves. It just makes me happy when I get to do that kind of stuff. But before I wrap up this episode, there is actually a box sitting over here underneath my box opening helmet ready to be opened. Someone sent me something awesome again. Another box has arrived for me to open and I, uh, I don't know what's going to be inside it. It's come in a Doc Martens box. It's not heavy as a set of Doc Martens, but it's a pretty big box. They're pretty exciting. Got my box opening helmet on. There we go. All right. So this is what I was talking about. Look how big ugh, this box is. It's massive and the handwriting, I'm not sure if you can see it on there. The handwriting, if I'm blocking on the microphone so you can't even hear me, handwriting's really good. I post on Twitter about it. Not only are you sending me something wonderful, you make me feel really conscious about how bad my handwriting is. All right, where am I? Oh, over there, here are my scissors. Let's just get this open like that all the way around. So if you want to send me stuff, then there is an address in the description down below uh, where you can send it to. It's a PO box. You can send anything you like to that and I'll open it on camera because I love receiving gifts from you guys. It makes my day and it's just super, super fun. So uh, there's nothing on the front that I need to read. So let's get a nice little like box opening here and oh, I'm, I'm glad I did a nice like little reveal there because it actually, it's all like packed up really nicely. Look at that. What are they? The Tyrrell's hand-cooked English crisps. Sea salt and cider vinegar. Oh, oh, I love some salt and vinegar chippies. Who doesn't love salt and vinegar chippies? Plus a lovely little, ooh, lovely little notes. Uh, lots of notes. Okay, what does this say? Oh God, I mean, look, look at the handwriting on this thing. Oh, it's so neat. I can barely even read it. Um, all right, this is going to take me a little while to decipher. I finally figured out what this note says, and I feel like there's something hidden inside that box that I haven't found yet, because the note says, JW, as every crazy Aussie YouTuber knows, it is essential to have a miniature version of themselves. Uh, I hope you like it, smiley face. From Lightly Seared, you are a freaking champion, Lightly Seared. Thank you very much. P.S. on the back here, please give a shout out to the um, uh, incredible, I think it says, Lass who created him, she's wonderful. And there's a little business card on the back here from Styles Crochet, which you can find on Facebook and Instagram. It says here, custom crochet dolls, custom crochet dolls made to order and made with love. What have you sent me? What have you done? What is, what is hiding underneath the chips? I mean, I thought you were just sending me snacks and like, I love snacks. So you could have just sent me snacks. I've been super happy with that. Anyway, is there something else hiding in here? I, I can't quite tell. I, I, there's lots of, lots of packaging. I'm rummaging through. Oh, oh, here we go. I found something. <laughs> what is this nonsense? That's fucking fantastic. Look at this guy. He's my, he's my character in seven days with his purple stash and his purple hair. We've both got matching mining helmets. <laughs> he's got a sledgehammer. <laughs> what? No, you can't be doing shit like that. That's fucking fantastic. Look at him. Look at his... <laughs> he's lucky I'm wearing a mining helmet because that, uh, that, uh, that sledgehammer is no joke. It's actually pretty heavy and pretty dense. That's fucking phenomenal. Ah. Oh. <laughs> How could you not love it? How could you not love getting something like that? Look at fucking look at him! I don't think there's anything else left in the box. Just a bunch of packaging to keep little sledgehammer seven days of wordle safe. <laughs> I can't get over that. That's so fucking fantastic. He's going straight on the shelf with all of my lovely Jawoodle stuff on display in the office. Oh, that's so freaking good. So thank you, Lightly Seed, and thank you, Styles Crochet, for making that. I'm blown away with that. I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't look at him, look at him without cracking the dumbest, stupidest, biggest smile. Oh, that's fan flipping tastic. All right, you stay over there for the moment. So that is, uh, it's been a while since I opened a box, but oh my goodness, I can't believe how cool that was. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to send some stuff over so I can open it up on camera, that's how you do it. The address is down below, so you can send it to that one and I'll get it and I'll open it. And we can all enjoy your awesomeness together, but I'll have to open some more stuff and build some more stuff in another episode because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter if I don't talk to you there first. I'll see you in the next episode.
have a good one.